Casper Hauser, the boy whose life was just as peculiar and mysterious as his death. Could he have been a kidnapped prince or a brilliant scam artist? You decide on today's peculiar occurrences. On May 26, 1828, a boy appeared in the streets of Nuremberg, Germany. He carried with him a letter addressed to the captain of the 4th Squadron of the 6th Cavalry Regiment, Captain Von Westning. The anonymous letter said that the boy had been given to the writer of the letter as an infant. On October 7th, 1812 and that he had instructed him in reading writing and the Christian religion but yet the man had never let the boy step even one foot outside of his house the letter went on to say that now the boy would like to be a soldier like his father once was a cavalry man and invited him to either take him in or hang him there was also another short letter enclosed that was supposed to be from the boy's mother to his previous caretaker that claimed that the boy had been born on April 30th, 1812 and that the boy's father had been a cavalryman in the 6th Regiment and was now dead. A shoemaker named Weckman took the boy to, a ho to the house of Captain Vaughn Westning where he would only repeat the words I want to be a cavalry man, as my father was. And the words, horse, horse. When pushed further, the boy would burst into tears and repeat the words, don't know. He was taken to the police station where he would write the name Casper Hauser. He showed that he was familiar with money and could say some prayers and that uh, he could write and read a little. But he answered few questions and his vocabulary appeared to be limited. And because he could provide no real background for himself, he ended up being imprisoned as a homeless vagrant. He spent the following two months in Lugensland Tower in Nuremberg Castle in the care of a jailer named Andreas. He seemed quite healthy and approximately 16 years old, but intellectually impaired. Mayor Binder, however, claimed that he was very bright indeed, and he ended up being visited by several people, though the strange part is he refused all food except for bread and water, which made people think that perhaps he had grown up in some sort of prison. At first, a lot of people assumed that maybe he was a wild child raised in the forest, or one raised in a prison. He soon ended up giving a whole nother tale of his life where he described living in a very small dank room about the size of a closet with a, uh, a bunch of hay for a bed and nothing but a toy horse and dog that was carved out of wood. He claimed he would go to sleep at night and every morning he would wake up and there would be rye bread and water sitting next to his haystack. And uh, sometimes he would drink it and it would taste bitter. And on those occasions, he would be put into a deep sleep. And when he woke up, his hay would be changed and his hair and his nails would be trimmed. Um, he recalls that the first person he ever seen was shortly before he had been released into the town. It was a man who had come to visit him and started teaching him to read, write, and Bible passages. The man was very careful not to let the young boy uh, see his face, always wearing a cloak of some sort. And he claimed that the man taught him to say, I want to be a cavalryman, as my father once wa was though the boy had no idea what any of these words actually meant. His peculiar tale arose great curiosity around him. Um, a lot of people thought that maybe he was of Baden royal descent. Others thought that he was nothing more but a brilliant scam artist. 
according to rumors, Casper Hauser was the hereditary prince of Baden who was born on September 29th, 1912, but who had also died October 16th of the same year. It was alleged that perhaps the young prince had been switched with a dying baby and disappeared and re-arose 16 years later in Germany, in Nuremberg. In this case, his uh, parents would have been Stephanie D. and Charles, Grand Duke of Baden. And since Charles had no surviving male progeny, his succession went to his uncle Louis and was later succeeded by his half-brother, Leopold. Leopold's mother, the Countess of Hochberg, is thought to be the culprit of the child's disappearance in this conspiracy. She supposedly took on a disguise of a famous ghost called the White Lady in order to take the child and took it away and secured secession for her son. In 1876, evidence against this theory was presented. Evidence of his quick and rushed baptism and autopsy. You see, the Grand Duchess had been very ill at the time of her child's death. Far too ill to actually see the child or attend the funeral. But the baby's father and aunt and grandmother, along with a count of 10 doctors along with funeral workers and such had all seen the child after death and it's unlikely that all of these people were in on the on uh, the white lady the countess having taken the child and so this was all presented as evidence to why this conspiracy theory just could not be true Although, you know, with them being royalty and such, I mean, little bitty babies, the way they are, they kind of, their appearance changes a lot. So, maybe they could have found a baby that looked a lot like this child that was dying. I don't know. What do you think? Now, in 2002, there was actually DNA analysts done on locks of hair of Casper's, along with, um... Uh, hairs and things off of his clothes. The DNA was then compared to a descendant, a female descendant of Stephanie's. Now, the, the sequences were not exact. There were a few alterations, but given the time frame and how many generations there has been since Stephanie, a relationship with that family could not be ruled out. At the same time, the very high similarity in no way proves a relationship to this family, to the royals. And the House of Baden refuses to let the body of Stephanie or the baby who had been buried as hers to be examined. Now, a lot of people actually took a lot of interest in Casper when he came to town to the point that he ended up being adopted by the entire town. He was placed in namesake of the town and donations were taken in order to take care of this boy. And he ended up being uh, sent from noble to noble to noble, uh, being taught the ways of the world and sciences and things of that nature. Though each one seemed to also have a their own um, their own reasons for wanting to have them, their own theories they were trying to prove while he was in their care. And a lot of times when those theories didn't work through, they dubbed him a liar and sent him on his way. Again and again, several families that that um, kept him actually ended up saying he was a very angry boy and he was a liar and um, ended up sending him off to new homes. And at one point, he was even attacked, and it was thought that he may have inflicted the wounds because he was told that he was a liar, and his stories were being doubted. So there was some that thought that maybe he inflicted the wound on himself in order to get them to feel sorry for him again and believe that this hooded, cloaked man was now after him to kill him since the cavalry uh, captain did not hang him. Though... 
In this instance, the boy had been attacked while in the outhouse, in, in the restroom, on the throne, as some might say. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, he was supposedly attacked by the hood man, and the hood man supposedly told him that he still needs to die. The authorities ended up believing he was lying because his blood trail uh, led up to the first floor where his bedroom was and then down into the cellar. Then he went down there where he was found instead of going to his caretakers and letting them know he was hurt. Though, looking back on this, this is also a time before they knew about things like autism and that would be something I, as a parent, with a child with autism, that that would be something I could very much see a child with autism doing, is going and hiding in fear, instead of going and trying to get help. On April 3rd, 1830, the boy had been trying to get a pistol down off of the wall, when the chair fell over, and the pistol fell down and went off and grazed the boy. Now, there are those that think that he was trying to get the pistol down in order to try to set up another incident where it looked like someone had tried to kill him. And then there are even those that doubt that the wound was caused by the shot. There are some that thinks that he make, made the cat himself and then set up the whole incident to occur. At one point, there was a lord that took interest in him that... Um, had decided to try to take him to Hungary because the boy could remember and say a few words in Hungarian. So he took him there thinking this boy was from some sort of royalty in Hungary. The boy had once stated that he had been the son of the count of a Hungarian countess. Though when the man took him to Hungary, he failed to recognize any of the buildings or anything like that. He had taken the boy to meet some Hungarian uh, nobility, and that Hungarian nobility later told him that him and his son had had a good laugh at meeting the peculiar boy and his uh, peculiar ways, which honestly quite embarrassed uh, this man. And at that point, he ended up giving up on the boy and believing that he was full of lies. Though, I have to say that in the beginning, the letter had said the boy had been kept inside his entire life. There's no way he would recognize buildings when he wasn't even a year old when he was brought to his first caretaker. On December 14th, 1833, Hauser came home with a, a deep wound to his breast. And he said a man in the park had stabbed him while handing him a small violet bag. He kept insisting that the police find this bag, and when they find, found the bag, they found uh, a note in it written in mirror writing, you know, where you put it down in front of a mirror and you write it, mirror writing. And the letter, the letter stated, Hauser will be able to tell you precisely of how I look and from where I am. To save Hauser the effort, I want to tell you myself of from where I come. I come from the Bavarian border on the river. I will even tell you my name. And then it gave the letters M L O. Hauser died of his wounds on December 17, 1833. Inconsistencies in Hauser's account led for the court's inquiries to believe that this was actually a self inflicted wound. Maybe to make noblemen that had promised to take him off to uh, seek who he really was, to try to force their hands at doing so. They say that on his deathbed he kept asking for the the velvet bag but never asked about what was inside of it. And he kept muttering things incoherently about writing in pencil as the note was written in pencil. The note was also found to have one spelling error and a grammatical error that Hauser was known to also misspell and a grammatical error he often did. And later on, forensics say that the wound in fact could have been self-inflicted. A lot of authors believe that he inflicted the wound on himself to spark interest within his story again. Plus, a man named Stanhope had promised to take him to England, and he was 
trying to make him do good on his promise. Now, a 1928 medical study supports that it was self-inflicted. While 2005 forensic analyst says that homicide cannot be ruled out. It was either self-inflicted or it was homicide. And after his death, there was many that claimed that he was murdered because he had been a kidnapped prince, while others believed he was a brilliant scam artist. But I don't know. I want to know what you think about this peculiar occurrence. Have you ever heard this story before? And if not, what do you think about it? And if you have, what do you think about it? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out my... Uh, description box for your peculiar occurrence gear as well don't forget to hit that like button share this out to all your peculiar friends and if you're new here hit that subscribe button along with that bell so that you know when I upload and until next time keep your eyes peeled for all things peculiar do 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 Are you listening? Damn.